way Trump flipped it on him, that's, if it wasn't my country, I mean, you know, I would find it hilarious. They built Trump. You know what I'm saying? I try to, I try to remind people. Yeah, I know Biden and Trump bad candidates, but Trump was just a TV guy. You know how many people have shows? Like, Steve Harvey is what Trump was. And they made a mistake because Hillary was so, Hillary was so damn arrogant. She told them, hey, I could beat Trump, elevate him. She told her friends at MSNBC and CNN to put the cameras on Trump. They put the cameras on Trump. We want him to be the nominee. We know we can beat him. He sucks. Him or Ted Cruz. And when they put the cameras on Trump, and Trump realized they put the cameras on him, he said, well, I know what to do with a camera. I've been using cameras. And they let the genie out of the bottle. And once the genie was out of the bottle, was no magic words to make him go back in the bottle. So no matter what people say, no matter what you think about Trump, that was intentional by powerful people where it came back to bite him in the ass. That's how it all happened. That's what gets, but you say, how do we get these two candidates? Because of the greed and the corrupt shun of the Democratic Party and the DNC is how you get this. It's not because of Trump. It's because of cover Trump. It got so bad, Trump would announce a speech he was going to do a rally. And, I don't know, his competitors in the, in the Republican Party would be actually doing a rally. They would turn from the actual speech that say Ted Cruz was doing or Krispy Kremes was doing and instead put the camera on Trump's empty podium. And they didn't do it because they love Trump. That's not why they did it. People say that, they, they don't understand. They did it because that's what the viewers wanted to see. They did it because the numbers of people that were watching tune in to wait for Trump to speak, if it was an hour or two hours or two and a half hours like Biden did yesterday, Biden took two and a half hours. He didn't do his speech till 8.30. He was supposed to do it at 6.30. The impromptu, off the cuff, extemporaneous, spontaneous speech where he had a list of names of people, the reporters to call on, not pick them out the blue shirt, red shirt, whoever. No, who's next? No, but he had people that he already knew who was going to, okay, this person's safe, this person's safe, this person's safe. Trump was such a draw. He was such a media magnet. People tuned in by the millions to see Trump's empty podium. More people watched the empty podium. They didn't turn the channel. They stayed watching and they just sat in the comment section or they stayed watching and they just talked amongst themselves at home. More Trump's empty podium got better ratings than CNN's roundtables discussions. Okay? And if you were in the news business, you had to cover it because your competition was covering it. And that's the only way you could stay in the ratings. It was not because they love Trump. It was not because it, it, it just took over. It started off, Hillary said, Trump started catching on as he caught wildfire. They had to keep doing it. Because, I don't know, I, it was sort of like if you were black in the 80s and you lived in the hood, and you, for, you found out about this stuff called crack. You didn't know what crack was. There was a time we didn't know what crack was. You know what I'm saying? It was just, it was weed, it was hash, there was no, you know, acid or so, you know, there was no, there was none of that. You know what I'm saying? And then you started hearing about this other thing. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't really know what that was, you know? But by the time you figured out what it was, it was too late. Like it was the thing that people were making money. It was just like somebody was backing up a Brinks truck 
to the hood and just dumping money off. That's how much money was coming. I mean, white folks from all over, from all the suburbs were driving in because they didn't even have it in their neighborhoods. They would just drive in with, with stuff, with money, with their checks, with, with their, with their cars and said, Hey man, you can have my car for the night. I'll find a place to sleep. You know, <laughs> that's real talk. That's, and you're like, what the hell is going to, so if you was on a corner and you were selling hashisha or weed or whatever, you, you would get moved off the block. You're like, you, you're watching other people make thousands while you, you can, you can beg somebody to take that from you. So that's what, that's what Trump became. He became the crack of the media game and he became crack to the news networks. It wasn't a choice. He changed media. I told this before, but I want people to understand. I know people who have become millionaires just because they covered Trump for the last seven years. Let that sink in, man. Regular people. That is nothing compared to what the networks made. There was, there was, there was the guy, the NBC guy. I forget the guy's name. Or was it CBS? No, it was CBS. The CBS guy, CEO of CBS, he's no longer the CEO, I don't think. I remember he said, you know, Trump may be bad for the country, but he's damn good for the news business. And they chose the news business over the country. That's really what happened. They chose the money. I think his name is Leslie something. Someone knows it in the comment section. That's what happened. Trump steamrolled media, and it'll never be the same. It is what it is. Trump steamrolled through the media. But just remember, Trump didn't do that on his own. He was created. He got a lot of help from Obama, for instance. Remember that correspondence dinner? Yeah. The correspondence dinner where Obama, the president of the United States, the leader of the free world, they say, put all his attention on Donald Trump. Now I know that... He's taken some flack lately, but no one is happier, no one is prouder to put this birth certificate matter to rest than the Donald. And that's because he can finally get back to focusing on the issues that matter. Like, did we fake the moon landing? What really happened in Roswell? And where are Biggie and Tupac? Say what you will about uh, Mr. Trump, he certainly would bring some change to the White House. <laughs> all kidding aside, obviously we all know about your credentials and breadth of experience. Um, <laughs> for example, uh, no, seriously, just recently in an episode of Celebrity Apprentice <laughs> at the Steakhouse, the men's cooking team uh, did not impress the judges from Omaha Steaks. And there was a lot of blame to go around, but you, Mr. Trump, recognized that the real problem was a lack of leadership. And so ultimately, you didn't blame Little John or Meatloaf. You fired Gary Busey. And these are the kind of decisions that would keep me up at night. Not only did he give Donald Trump the attention, he gave Donald Trump a reason. Oh, a reason. Payback. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah. Motivation. They play games. They poked the tiger. And the tiger bit him. That's what tigers do. That's what Trump did. And now they want to pretend. Now they want us all to believe that it's all our fault. You disagree? You don't think they built Trump? They, of course they built Trump. Because if they didn't want Trump to get bigger, he never would have got bigger. If they didn't want Trump to get the media attention, he never would have got the media attention to begin with. And my proof is the 2024 Democratic primaries. What happened to Marianne Williamson? What happened to Dean Phillips? What happened to Jank Uger? What happened to RFK Jr.? Nothing happened to them because they said no cameras. 
no coverage. They did the opposite with Trump. They are responsible. So as upset as the 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 as, as as sad as Van Jones is, as pathetic as McCarthy Sellers is caping for Biden, all of them that are crying, whoop you don't care if if Biden controls his bowels and all this stuff, you're still gonna vote for him. Whatever. At the end of the day, it's the Democrats who put Trump in. All because they thought they could exploit him and use him to get Hillary in. And it backfired on him. And now Trump is the genie that won't go back in the bottle. And they've been saying everything. They said, January 6th, and he won't go back in the bottle. They said, lawsuit. <laughs> you know, Georgia lawsuit, and he won't go back in the bottle. Hell, they even started before then. They said, Hollywood access tapes, and he would not go back in the bottle. They said, Charlottesville, and he will not go back in the bottle. You know what I'm saying? They said, ah, Central Park Five, and he would not go back in the bottle. Though we should apologize for that shit. That didn't stop him. The genie still didn't go back in the bottle because the disgust, the frustration level, the outside frustration level of black voters with body Biden, with riding with Biden, as uh, Clyburn wants to put it. So it is what it is, man. The way Trump flipped it on him, that's, if it wasn't my country, I mean, you know, I would find it hilarious. If it was someone else's country, if it was a movie, maybe, it would be like, wow, man, it was an interesting movie. Did you see the, the you know, the, the Trump took over the world movie? Man, that shit was amazing, man. That was crazy, man. You see how he did that? How he used to do that? But it's not a movie. It's real life. What's going on? Can other political strategies have Unintended consequences like this? Let me know what you think. Subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Huh. The Democratic Party created a monster. Boo! <laughs>